Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we ask that we would understand your words to us and that we would live your way and follow you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The story is told of a land a long time ago and a far place. It was called Swabido Land, and the people that lived there were called Swabido Das. Their one unique feature about these people was that they carried bags with them, all of them, and in the bags they had warm fuzzies. And when they greeted people, they would give them a warm fuzzy. And sometimes people would ask them, and they would give them. Now I'm sure that the warm fuzzies came as a result of many cold pricklies from previous generations. A cold prickly is, you're bad, you're no good, you're wrong, I don't like you, and, and all those kinds of things that people say. And the warm fuzzies are welcome, I love you, you're nice, and it's positive. And so they had this custom, they just gave these out, until one day, a stranger came, and he said, this is curious, you keep giving away these warm fuzzies, you won't have enough. You'll give them all away, and then you won't have any for yourselves. And a hush went over the land, a shudder. They had never thought of that. And so they began to hoard their warm fuzzies. They kept them. They didn't give them away. Some clever guy came up with an idea of making a plastic fuzzy. But that wasn't the same as a warm fuzzy. It wasn't quite as bad as a cold prickly, but it wasn't the good thing. And then this went on for a while, and then a prophet came to the land. And the prophet said, why are you hoarding the warm fuzzies? You think that you're going to run out of them, but that's not true. The more you give away, the more you will receive. And some of the people believed him, and they started giving the warm fuzzies again. But others didn't think it was going to happen, and so they held on to what they had. Now, you may have heard the story of the warm fuzzies in many different ways before, and this is an important ingredient in our lives, the warm fuzzies. Now, I must tell you that Cindy and I live in fuzzy land, okay? Libbots of Lancaster County. You can walk down the street, people will wave to you. You'll walk down the street, they'll talk to you, they won't look the other way. And I'm talking not just about older people, I'm talking about children and, 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 uh, and youth. And, and they seem genuine, like, it's really nice to see you. Now, we came from Bethlehem, uh, and that was, that was more cold prickly land. And uh, you could walk down the street there, and they didn't even acknowledge your presence. They would bump into you without anything. Now, these warm fuzzies are more than just, hi, how are you doing? But that's a part of it. Now, you, you, you must think, now, what in the world has he, has he lost all of his senses? Because I just read to you a story of judgment and, and uh, really the last times and the people that are going to be thrown into the fire. And now here I'm talking about warm fuzzies. And if, if you hang with me for a while, I'm going to try to bridge that gap and help you understand what's going on. In the scripture, it has Jesus talking about the end of time. He's coming back. And the sheep and the goats are going to be separated. And we focus on that judgment part. We focus on, you know, here's the time God's going to separate the good from the bad. And we miss the important part of that story. The important part of that story is the judgment, how it happens. Not that it's separation and, and going to, to good places or bad places. The judge says... You have done these things. You have given the warm fuzzies to people. You've done this to the least of these. And by so doing, you have done it to me. And so as, as we look at this story, I want us to take out of that, not the, the, the image of the judgment, but the image of life. Jesus was trying to tell his followers about life and how life happened. And how life happens in God's realm is how we deal with one another. And we don't have to be perfect with that. I mean, we, we can't always do everything and give warm fuzzies all the time. But it needs to be our way of life. 
It needs to be our understanding of how we, we serve and how we live and how we are God's people. Some years ago, I think I was out of school for about five years, and, and I was you know, a new minister, and I, I decided at one time I needed a, another car, and so I went to a car dealer, and the salesman was there helping me, and we were looking around, and, and he found this one car that I liked, and, and he, he thought, okay, I'll make you a deal, and so he evaluated the car I was trading in, and he gave me this deal, and he... And I said, well, you know what? I, I said, I, I, I want to look around. You were the first place I stopped. And he said, okay. He said, I understand that. He said, but do me one favor. And he said, I, you know, I, I know that you're a minister. You don't have a lot of money. And, you know, and if you find another car that you like, before you make the deal, call me. Call me. And I said, okay, I'll do that. So I got my car and went down the street. And there was another car dealer I was planned to go to. And... There I saw the perfect car, and the salesman was really nice, and he was really helpful, and he worked me a real good deal, and I said, okay, I'll take it. And then in the back of my mind was this promise I had made to the first salesman, and I thought, yeah, he's just a salesman, it won't make any difference. So I signed on the dotted line, took up the car the next day. I was home that night, and the phone rang. The phone was from the first salesman, the one I had promised to let know before I bought a car. And he said, well, how'd you make out? Well, I said I made out pretty well. I found a car that I really liked. I liked it a little better than the car you had. And so I made a deal and I signed on the dotted line. And he said, boy, so I'm really disappointed. And we kind of ended the conversation. It was rather awkward. So I went and I got my new car and I was happy. And I thought, oh, you know, I'm sorry about the salesman, but you know, that's the way it goes. Two days later, in the mail, I got a five-page letter from the first salesman. It started out by saying, I, I showed this to my sales manager, and he okayed that I would send this to you. And he said, it's so disappointing when a man of the cloth lies to me, and it's upsetting, and it, and it, it hurts my faith. In fact, I've struggled and been so upset with this, it's, I've kind of lost my faith. And so I, I called him immediately and apologized, and then I drove out to see him as soon as I could. But we don't know how important what we say is to other people. And I'm not just talking about ministers. I'm talking about all of us who profess to be Christians. What we do and what we say has a profound effect on other people. And we need to understand that what Jesus is calling us is to responsible living, to a way of life that lifts people and does not put people down. To know that what we say and what we do and how we live is witness. Now again, we can't be perfect at that, but it needs to be our intention, it needs to be our goal, it needs to be the guiding force in our lives. And so I say that the Spadito Das, who gave away warm fuzzies, were really right on target. Jesus said, when you've done it to the least of these people, when you've done it to the least important people, you have done it to me. So that means the loving words. That means the lifting. That means understanding. Some years ago, I used to go with a friend of mine to his AA meetings. He was a recovering alcoholic, and I would go from time to time just to be supportive to him. And, and you know, you can learn a lot there. And I, one of the things I learned is that they have many phrases. And one of the phrases was, if you're going to talk the talk, you have to walk the walk. And I think that's, that's a pretty good thought. If, if we are going to profess Christianity, then we're going to have to live it. Now, the other thing that I was... Uh, always intrigued with. They, they talked about the kamikaze. The kamikaze who was involved but not committed because he flew 27 missions. Now the kamikazes were supposed to fly, uh, to fly one mission and crash their plane into the other ships. So involvement is one thing. Commitment is another. Jesus is calling us not to judgment. He's calling us to commitment. If you have done it to the least of these, you have done it to me. We need to see in each one here, in ourselves, the life of Jesus. 
And we need to commit to live that life, to support, to care, to love, to give warm fuzzies to one another. People prosper more by that than the cold pricklies. We need to understand that Christ has called us to this, that we might share with one another, that we might lift one another, that we might love one another. The examples that he gave were just a few. We need to find ways to do that with all people and in all ways. If you have done it to the least important of these, you have done it to me. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, help us to see in ourselves and others you and to live and to love and to share, to truly give of who we are. Amen.